Hey everybody, it's Matt from RideHub here. And on this episode of Trail Physics, we're gonna be looking at the Rupert Wood Berm here in Squamish. So Rupert's a single black diamond trail in Squamish, and it has a lot of cool technical rock features in it. But most of those features actually have ride around. So riders of differing levels can actually go on the same ride. And because a lot of those features get bigger as you move down the trail, it's really good for progression. The only feature, however, that doesn't have a ride around is the wood berm. Probably the thing that makes this feature the most difficult is actually seeing what the line is. And I mean, let's be serious, Gary, the guy who built it, does only have one eye. We've got a wood bridge here, a wood bridge here, smooth rock, janky rock, and then a wood berm. It looks like there's an inside line. So it's actually very confusing the first time you roll up on it. Now the crux of this particular move really lies in the transition from what we'll call the first rock to the second rock. And it's at this transition point where riders will typically foul up. But what's interesting is how much the run-in actually plays a part in your success for the feature. Probably one of the most common things we see is people tend to lose a lot of their speed on this run-in and they're not able to carry enough of that speed to get them up and around to the second piece of rock. If you don't have enough speed, you're gonna have to try to put in a pedal stroke in a very awkward place. So they stall out a little bit and they start tumbling towards the inside. If you ride clipped in, this can be a really difficult area to get your feet out of your clips as well. From there, it's about a four foot fall to the inside and there's not really a nice place to fall. We've got this big pointy rock here, more rock outcropping. Uh, definitely doesn't feel good. The one bit of exposure people tend to forget about is the one off the right hand side here. Now this is 10 feet from where I'm standing all the way to the ground. So a lot of riders tend to change their incoming line to avoid this exposure. Now, while there's a few different ways to get around this obstacle, what we're gonna do right now is go walk the preferred line. So the entrance phase of this is very, very important. I'm actually gonna be staying a little bit to the right, carrying myself down the smoother part of the trail. On to the wood, we're gonna begin the entrance to the obstacle. From here, I'm gonna aim to cut very high up and around this first phase of the rock and allow my momentum to carry me onto the second phase of the rock. Still staying to the outside, I'm gonna start transferring to my wood berm and start heading towards my exit. I'm then going to roll down the end and stay right all the way lining up for my exit corner. So now I'll go ride this line. By far, the most common error we see is riders tending to air too much to the inside on their way up this first rock. If they take more of this inside line, they're guaranteed to have one or both of their tires going over top of this knuckle and then try to make a very, very tight turn. That's gonna zap all of their speed, throws off their stability and balance and makes it very, very easy for them to fall. And it's gonna be very, very difficult to continue with any momentum into the next part of the feature. The reason most riders tend to air to the inside is because this actually is a very visibly vertical rock. Looking at it from the bottom, you can see just how off camera this rock is, and it is quite the uphill. However, if you have really good entrance speed, you'll very easily carry your momentum up and over the outside of that rock. The big braking mistake we tend to see on this piece of rock is people grabbing too much of their front brake. And when you're using it during a turn, it has a tendency to make the front wheel very, very twitchy. So instead, what we're gonna try to do is use a little bit more of our back brake to maintain our speed, which will allow us to carry around the obstacle without needing to put in a pedal stroke. One of the biggest reasons people have a problem with this maneuver is they'll actually jump too much speed right here. They get a little hesitant getting this close to the edge and they slow right down. You'll see we have a couple different line choices here. You'll notice on the left here, it's very rocky and bumpy. And because it wants to shoot you straight out, you actually have to start changing your direction halfway to the next feature. If I focus on taking the right line, which is a little smoother, it allows me to carry my momentum but also gives me a nice straight entrance into the first phase of the rock. This way I have as much momentum as I can to allow me to get up and around this rock. What's important is I'm gonna track my front wheel nice and wide around the outside so that my rear wheel, when it tracks to the inside, avoids the knuckle. 
If I happen to come my front wheel too much to the inside, the rear wheel is going to track right over this knuckle and it's going to zap all of my speed. It's also going to set me up very poorly for the wood berm. So once I've carried that front wheel nice and wide and my rear tire is tracking just past the knuckle, I'm gonna start getting onto my brakes to get myself under control for the wood berm. So this wood berm tends to absorb moisture, it retains that moisture, and it makes it very, very slippery. People are a little too hot coming into this wood berm, they grab a whole bunch of brakes when it's wet or damp, and the bike wants to slide to the inside. We can see that same problem on this entry rock. When it's very wet, it has a tendency to be a little greasy, so we don't need to be applying our brakes until we've leveled out in between the two pieces of the feature. And when the wood's dry, you've got lots of traction on it, so you can use your brakes. So it's very important we keep our front tire tracking towards the outside as we enter the wood berm, so the rear tire can track more towards the inside and still be safely on the berm. As our front tire approaches the end, our rear tire will fall more in line with the front wheel again, and we can execute our roll down or our drop. So I'm gonna come down here, staying to the right, allowing myself to be off the brakes. As I get to the wood, I'm gonna look ahead, make sure I've got a nice straight line and allowing my momentum to carry me down and up and around this rock, tracking the front wheel nice and wide around the outside onto the second phase of this rock. My rear tire is gonna get up on this rock as well. I can start applying my brakes to bring my speed under control if needed. And then I'm going to enter onto my wood berm, roll down towards the exit, drop off the end. Once I'm down and on my run out, I'm gonna look ahead, avoid these obstacles on the left and execute my turn. So that's the Rupert Exit Berm. Thanks again for watching this episode of Trail Physics with Ride Hub. If you like the content you see, please subscribe, give us a like. It helps us continue making this content. Time to put the phone down, close the computer, and go ride your bike.